Good evening everyone, welcome back. Um, this time on the kitchen table, as promised in an earlier video, we're going to take a closer look at the Black Pearl 7 inch HD screen FPV diversity receiver 7 inch monitor from Flysight. Um, pass. I, I. No idea. Anyway. Um, yeah, so uh, I had a give, give you an overview of my um, setup uh, on the P2 with the H3 3D the other day, and and I sort of mentioned in passing that I thought the screen was very good, and I and I thought it warrants another a bit of a closer look. Um, so this is the this is the box. Um, yeah, it's a box. But here's the here's the stuff there. So resolution of 1024 by 600, 700 is one contrast. A luminance in something per square meters. Uh, 5.8, obviously. Um, NTSC and PAL. Two receivers. AV in. HDMI in as well. Yeah. Um, overall dimensions: 183 by 126 by 19 millimeters. There we go. So let's. Um, in the box, first of all, and apologies for the noise and the flashing in the background, but yeah, it's the the the, the, the humming noise is the fan on the AVL58. It's not anything else. Uh, so in the box comes this um, three-part sunshade, which is actually quite deep, and that just clips onto little holes on the side. You put the top on first, and then uh, sorry, you put the two sides in first, and then clip on the top, which secures it. Um, and they just kind of snap apart and they, that folds flat, which you saw in my review of the backpack case means that you can slot that away. You know, really nicely. Quite effective, like I said, quite a good depth on it. Um, yeah, so that's quite good. You get um, an AV lead. You get another AV lead. You get a power lead with a male connector, and you get a power lead with a female connector. And you get the screen itself with its two antennas. So it comes with these standard antennas. Um, it's a nice unit. Um, it's a mat. I don't know if I'm just. You see, it's it's a it's a matte finish screen. A few fingerprints on there, aren't there? It's a matte finish screen, so it's not too glary, actually. I found. Um, you can see the the width. Uh, so we do a little tour around. So standard tripod mount down there. Uh, on the front, you've got power on off and um, menu uh, button mode or menu select then you've got down up minus and plus we'll go through those in a second on the side here you've got um, two DC jacks uh, the bottom one is DC in which is fairly standard uh, I think it goes anywhere from 11 up to 28 volts or something ridiculous uh, and this one's DC out uh, hence the two power adapters so if you've got something like a, a DVR or something you want to power from this You've got the ability to take off uh, a bit of power there, and on the other side, you've got the the various outputs. So you've got AV out and AV out for the two receivers, diversity AV out and an AV in and an HDMI in. Um, and here is the rechargeable battery pack. Yeah, what's that? 11.1 volts, 1,000 milliamp hours. Yeah, input 10 volts to 28 volts at 2 amps to charge it. Um, and there it is, so it's the RC801, made in China. So, yeah, anywhere between 7 and 28 volts DC input and 11.1 volt 3S LiPo. So if you want to... Um, if you have one of those hanging around and you want to, you know, you're running out of uh, what this this can give you, then um, you've got some options there. Let me just 
fight it back in. This is one thing I found actually, this battery is quite, that's it, tricky to, but again, it's not coming out, there's a lock there. Um, two Omni antennas for both receivers. This is a diversity, which means you've got two receivers which you can set to independent frequencies, or you can run in diversity mode where they're both on the same frequency and it will automatically swap to whichever one is giving the strongest signal at any one time. So, um, yeah, it's, it's nice and light. I think I showed you last time it sits on the transmitter really well. So let's um, fire it up, press and hold. Obviously this light shows you which receiver is uh, currently operating. Mm. And there we go. We have a, a lovely view of Daisy asleep, currently whimpering in her sleep. Obviously strange dreams. Uh, I don't know if we're gonna get any, but you can see the screen. I've set it up for outdoor, so it's a bit bright in here. I'm terribly sorry. You can see the overlay from the IOSD on there. Um, you know, if I rock the aircraft, then you've got the artificial horizon going, so on and so forth. Um, but yeah, it's not going to do it justice in here. The, um, I'll just say the, the viewing angles are very, very good on the horizontal. Vertically, you can see it, it goes off fairly quickly in that direction and hangs around in that direction. But it's a nice, um, it's a nice screen, nice clear image. You can adjust the brightness and the contrast and the sharpness and all sorts. Um, so what can you do? So if we go into the menu system, so we've got basically um, picture modes, so soft, sharp, and user mode, you can select the brightness, the contrast, um, and sharpness and hue and saturation and color temperature and all that kind of stuff. You've then got sound, it has got speakers, um, should you wish to play it through there. Various functions like auto power off, flipping the display, um, what ratio you want. Then you've got the, the bands. Um, I'm using the AVL58 from DJI, which meant that band E on here gives me uh, um, a good, you know, that's, that's the one that has the frequency that's, that's the match. Um, you can obviously, you've got 36 different frequencies across the, the, the bands in here, so you can select whichever matches your um, equipment. Um, and you've also got the option to set the receiver bands one and band two, um, receivers, sorry, one and two at different bands as well. So you can, you know, flip around from um, two different sources. Um, and the mode button on its own will just tell you currently where we're on, bandy and channel four on diversity mode. It then flips it to receiver one, receiver two, AV in, and HDMI in, which obviously I haven't got any of those things plugged in. And then back to diversity mode. Um, up and down, we'll do the volume, if you have a source for volume. And also, if you long press on the plus button, it will zoom in to the full screen. Now you're gonna lose some IOSD data from the top, but um, you could still navigate with the key data there. You just lose the, the GoPro stuff and it's a, it's, it fills the full screen. Press minus. And you're back to the, the standard view with all the, all the data on the top. Um, if I tilt it for the, the, the light of the angle there, you can see we've got voltage, percentage, the GoPro data and not really, you know, how much um, time is left recording, battery on the GoPro and so on. The battery on here, if you just press um, this once, you'll get a, a display showing the battery level and what dot band you're on. Um, really tidy. Um, the brightness can be tweaked right up. I find if, indoors, obviously, you get, you know, it loses a bit of contrast. You can mess around with sharpness. I haven't I need to go outdoors again and, and sort of in, in sort of sunny conditions and set it up for that. Um, but I'm very impressed with it, especially, you know, the size of the package. Um, it's, it's light. It's, it's a good quality screen. Um, the brightness can be tweaked, the sunshade. Diversity built in. 
everything you need. Charge that up, and um, you know that's 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 all you need to take at the receiving end. Pretty impressed with this. Uh, it came recommended to me from other users who've got it, and I can see why. Um, it's currently available in the UK around about the £150 mark. Um, just be aware that I think the standard kit does not come with any sort of mains power to charge the battery. The my the retailer that I bought it from did include a, a wall plug, you know, 12 volt bog standard thing, um, which is useful. But as a, as a, I think the standard package, it isn't included. So just have a look out for that if you haven't got a suitable power supply. Like I said, it will run off. Um, lipos as well so all in all that's the black pearl um, it, it seems to get pretty rave reviews from everybody and and, and I kind of understand why um, I think it's it's just the right size with the with the with the mount that, that I had and showed you last time it, it balances nicely on the transmitter and and it it's an, it's a good amount of, of screen real estate for for lining up your shots and and actually being able to see in some detail what the GoPro is seeing. So there we go. As promised, that was the walk around of the um, FlySight Black Pearl 7-inch diversity receiver monitor. Um, any questions, um, just pop them down there and I'll do my best to get around to answering them as soon as possible. Um, currently in the UK, around the 150, 100, yeah, 150 pound mark delivered is what you should probably aim to, to pay uh, in the UK. Um, they do come in different versions. so just check what version you're getting. Some of them have different um, uh, different connects at the top. I think these are RPSMA. Don't quote me on that, but I think they are. Um, and obviously it gives you the opportunity to, to add your own antennas if you want to do something a bit more focused, get a sort of a helical on there, um, uh, maybe a skew planer for sort of more um, close in stuff. You can have a play. There we go, I hope that was useful. Um, and uh, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you again soon back on the kitchen table. Good night.